Hi everyone, my name is Jeff and I've been meaning to show off this computer I've built for a while now, and I thought I'd better do it now before it gets destroyed. This is a Ben Eater style 65 2 computer, and as you can see I started with Ben's kit. By the way, Ben, if you're watching, I want to thank you for your instructive and entertaining videos. Although I bought my first 74LS chip over 35 years ago, there were huge gaps in my electronics knowledge that you filled in. Mine doesn't look like the picture because I've added a bunch of stuff, but it's still basically the same computer. I mean, I did fry this oscillator. I think I might have installed it upside down and gotten voltage where it shouldn't have been. And the original RAM chip died from a case of electrostatic shock. It actually broke a pin off this EEPROM. That was when I decided to rearrange the layout to give me more space for my fingers. And I don't know what I did to this LCD. So I've got a bit of a ship of Theseus thing going on. One thing I'd wish I'd done earlier was using stranded wire for these power leads, which I just soldered onto a little scrap of stripboard, and then the stripboard also has header pins soldered on to connect to the breadboard. This produces a nice secure power connection. It's a small amount of effort for some nice peace of mind. I also added a Pyron reset circuit based on advice in the 6502 forum. This chip, and it is an IC even though it looks like a transistor, measures the power on the 5 volt line and pulls the reset line low if the power is too low. Then, when the power gets acceptably close to 5 volts, it starts a timer, and if the power is still good about a third of a second later, it releases the reset line. The end result is you don't have to hold down the reset button while plugging in the power because this chip does it for you. It also debounces the reset button as a side effect. I've experimented with different ways to do the address mapping because I wanted to make full use of the 32 kilobytes of RAM. In this version, I've set aside addresses 7F00 to 7FFF for I.O. devices, and I'm using, doing that using two 4-bit comparators to look at the top 8 bits of the address on the address bus. This kind of comparator produces three output lines, one indicating that the address is greater than 7F, one for less than 7F, and one for equal to 7F. The outputs are active high, which is inconvenient because I have to run them through an inverter before connecting them to the chip select lines on the ROM, RAM, and I.O. chips. Oh, and I wired up a 16550 UART based on a schematic available at stechschwein.de. This was before Ben started posting videos again, and I didn't know he was going to go a different way with the 6550 one. Back in the day, the 16550 was THE UART that everybody wanted, so I had to have one on this computer. But my most obvious change is this 7-segment LED display. I wrote some self-test code that runs at reset time, and needed a way to show an error code if something fails. For example, if I yank one of the wires leading to the RAM, the self-test should report error 2. I could display error codes down here on the LCD display, but then the LCD display would have to be working, and the 6522 it's connected to would also have to be working in the ROM, and the RAM... Basically the whole computer would have to be working to display an error saying that something isn't working. So I've got this LED connected to an octal Type-D flip-flop chip. The Q outputs of the flip-flops drive the LED segments, and the inputs are connected to the CPU data lines. The tricky part is timing the clock signal on the flip-flops to capture the data at the right time. To figure out how to make that work, I had to learn about system timing. Fortunately, Ben did a great video on that topic. Though you do have to watch it all the way through. And I had to watch it three times. There's also some stuff about setup times and hold times, but once you get it, it isn't that hard. The secret sauce here is that I'm using a quad NAND gate to generate additional clock signals from the oscillator, and I've got two of those running slightly ahead of Phi 2. This gives the logic that clocks the flip-flops a little extra time. Long term, I'd like to use this technique to implement some high-speed I.O. And by high-speed, I just mean faster than bit-banging the pins on the 6522. But before I get to that, I've got some changes I want to make to this version. There are multiple versions of the reset chip depending on what tolerance you want it to enforce, and I don't think I'm using the right one, so I want to experiment with that. Then I want to replace these 4-bit comparators with something that will give me more flexibility on the address decode, and generally I want to reduce the overall chip count. Ultimately, I'd like to get everything down to about this size. But it's entirely possible I'll destroy something important along the way, in which case you might never see the computer again. If you think this project looks interesting, please leave a comment below and let me know if there's anything you think I should talk about in a future video. Thanks in advance for doing that, and thanks for watching.